Chapter 14 is actually all about this acid base titration curve. As I mentioned in the very beginning, the key elements of the titration curve is you're going to have a one titrant and one analyte. Titrant is actually the species that you have a known concentration and then you add it into a flask. Inside that flask, you have a solution. The solution has a name called the analyte. So most of the time, you don't know the concentration of your analyte. So you don't know the concentration of the analyte. Okay, but you do know the volume of the analyte inside your solution. But the titrant is actually the opposite, okay? You know the concentration of your titrant, okay? So you know this, but you don't know how much of titrant is add to your analyte so that the concentration of your titrant and analyte they are actually equal to each other. So for the titrant, we only use strong acid or strong base. So this one, can only be strong acid or strong base. But for your analyze, it can be anything, okay? It can be strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base, or buffer. One thing we're going to do a lot is actually, when we do all these titration things, we actually want to know how the pH of your analyte changes. So that is actually the very important features of this chapter, okay? Eventually, what you're going to do is actually want to make a plot. On the y-axis, it will be the pH of your analyte. On the x-axis will be volume of your titrant. Okay, so let's do a quick salt experiment. Your titrant, let's say, is a strong base, for example, sodium hydroxide. And your analyte is your HCOOH, a weak acid. Okay, if I want to actually plot out this titration curve, this is pH 7. Before I add in any titrant, what kind of solution do I have? Acidic solution, right? Therefore, the pH is lower than 7, right? So you know the curve will stop somewhere below 7, right? And then you are going to add in your base. So once you add in base, what happens? The pH is going to increase slowly. At certain point, when you do your Jenkins experiment, at certain point, you'll see a quickly pH jump. When you see that happens, what it means, you are going to reach a point that's called the equivalence point, where this point means actually you have the same amount of titrant and analyte. Okay, so number of more of titrant is going to equal number of more of analyte. Once you see this sudden jump, okay, you will see a pH go up very quickly. And then it's going to reach another plateau. Okay, so this will be actually a typical titration curve you should expect if you have a titrant as a strong base. Okay, your analyze actually a uh, acid. Here, we are going to pay attention to four different zones. Okay, zone number one is actually you, before you add in any titrant. So zone number one is actually no titrant condition. Zone number two is actually if you add in certain amount of titrant. Okay, so you're going to the zone number two. That's actually before your equivalence point. Okay, so I will call the equivalent point just EP, okay? Zone two is actually before your equivalence point. Zone three will be actually at equivalence point. And then zone four will be after equivalence point. So what we are going to do today is actually, if I give you a system, a titration system, can you calculate the pH at these four different zones? And then the general approach is solve a question like this. Follow four steps. Okay, so these are the four steps you will always, always want to do. Okay, when you encounter any questions in chapter 14. Step number one, you want to know what is your titrant, what is your analyte. Okay, so that you will know what solution you have in the very beginning. Step number two. You want to actually write out the 
ionic equation. Here we're going to write out two different ionic equations. One is so called the complete, and then the other is called the net ionic equation. The third step is actually you want to calculate your VEP. You want to know after a certain amount of titration, you will actually reach the equivalence point. And the equation you are going to use is number of mole of your titrain is going to equal to the number of mole of your analyte. So that you can actually figure out what is the volume you will need to reach your EEP. And the very last one is calculate the pH at four zones. So there will be actually the four steps we are going to use for all the questions in this chapter.